Welcome back to another Construct video. In this video, I want to talk about the differences between the free version of Construct and the premium one. Now, you'll see that it is £18 a month if you are paying for premium or £110 a year. But is it really worth it? I'm going to go through all the stuff that you get if you do pay for the premium version so you can make up that choice for yourself. So starting off with the Construct page that they've put together and what the difference is between. So let's start with the first bit, and this is not all of them. There are some other stuff they've not put on here, which I think is a bit of a weird decision. First of all, maximum events. You're limited to only 50 events in the free version. And this is only if you do sign up for an account. Why in the personal edition be paid for? You do get as many events you like. Now for short projects, this is absolutely fine. You will go above 50 events, but for large projects, especially when you start adding menu systems, or even stuff like Pokemon where you're doing stuff like a type chart, this can increase the events that you're using massively and you'll soon reach that 50 mark. So depending on what type of project you are using, a premium version of Construct might be needed. This next one, however, is really useful. This is maximum layers. Now on the free version, you only get two layers. And what I normally use if I'm doing a tutorial for the free version is one layer for the UI and one layer for the rest of the game. Having more layers means that you can have a background layer, you can have your player on its own layer, you can have scenery on its own layer, you can have different parts of UI, you can have a menu pop up on a different layer. And this just makes organization of the project so much easier. So this one, if you are making a game that has got lots of elements in it and you want to sort between them, this one's actually a really nice one to get. Next one, special effects. Now, I didn't realize that you were only limited to two effects. Effects are something that I don't really use inside of Construct. Um, but if you are somebody who do like effects, like adding them, you can have unlimited using Construct Premium. I don't think the effects are worth the money. I think the effects are quite basic. And why they do work in certain scenarios, they are very situational. So. For me, this is not one that justifies the money. This one might be for some people though, which is create multiplayer games. So with the free version of Construct, you get access to the multiplayer tools and create a host server or peer-to-peer -peer sort of clients that can play a game together. So multiplayer games, this is a really, really nice thing. And if you do want to create a multiplayer game, Construct's a nice engine to do it in. However, what I think is stopping a lot of people going that this is worth the money for is the lack of multiplayer tutorials, not just from the community, but from Construct themselves. The multiplayer tools are not easy to use, and this is not a Construct thing. This is for any game engine out there. Multiplayer is a really, really difficult concept to get your head around, but the lack of tutorials makes it even harder. So why we can do this with a paid for Construct account you then need the knowledge on top in order to access that. Custom loading screens, if you're making your own projects and you want a loading screen that's not the construct one, obviously paying for it is, is worth the money, but you can have your own loading screen on top of the construct one. It's just something that we just code in instead. So if you don't mind having the game start and having the construct logo, the same way that the Unity logo pops up on most games, then again, there's no real reason to pay the extra, have the contract logo pop up, and then get it to go to a layout that has your logo in it. Doesn't make a huge difference. This one, however, will make a big difference if you are producing a game, especially if you're making an app with in-app purchases, and that is monetization. There's lots of different options for monetization that Construct has, so let's go through the main ones. So first one, generate money. If you do not pay for a premium version of the account, you are not allowed to make money off Construct Games. Now, this is a little bit confusing because it does say that for royalty free, you get to keep every penny that you make off the games. And then this one's saying that you can sell one type games. So I don't know if actually you are allowed to sell games if you do not pay for premium or not. Um, but other game engines do take royalty fees from you. So I believe that Unity's 20%, I think Unreal is, 15 or 20 percent of your profits so if you are enjoying construct and you are looking at making a game and making money off it you'll need a premium account but you can make that money back you've also got advertisements these are really easy to put in it's just um, an object that we can put in and there's a couple of other little bits that we need to do but you can have adverts appear in your game and again that's just for making money or profit and the same for in-app purchases so if you are making an app or any 
sort of game that will feature advertising or monetization of any sort, then yeah, paying for premium is a no-brainer and it's something that you'd have to do. But most people I think out there are not looking at making money off their games. Not yet anyway. And then we have to JavaScript coding. This lets you write JavaScript instead of using traditional construct blocks. Now, there are some benefits to using JavaScript. You can get additional um, APIs working, so you can get stuff to do with machine learning a bit easier. And there's certain stuff in JavaScript that's just so much easier to do than writing it in construct. What I will say, though, is if you are looking at doing coding and do majority of your time coding, then go to a different game engine. There are so many great game engines out there that work so much better with coding and even with JavaScript, you're still quite limited on what you can do inside of Construct. Um, I've not played too much around with it, but it's not going to be as powerful as programming in Unity or Godot or I think GameMaker supports their own coding language. So I, I would say if you're really looking at this is the must-have feature that I want, I want to be able to write JavaScript, you might just want to look at another game engine, but again, that, that's your preference and something that you can look into. We've then got publishing. This is a big one. Currently, you can only publish to the Construct Arcade, which is their own website of lots of projects people have made, and HTML5, which means you can upload to itch.io, which is really, really easy to use and set up, really good if you're doing stuff like game gems. You cannot, however, publish desktop. You cannot build Android apps or iOS. And there are other stuff like um, Facebook Instant or these playable ads and all these other sort of export options. So if you are looking to export into multiple platforms, whether you're making money or not, um, having these extra publishing options is really nice. You're not just limited to the web. Um, so that is obviously a drawback for a lot of people that forces them to get the premium version is they have no choice because they need to publish. Um, so again, if you're looking at that side, it may be worth paying for a premium version of Construct. We then got the advanced features. So let's go through these one at a time. First one is timeline animations. So timeline animations, I think I've not really played around with, but I've seen lots of people do some very, very clever stuff with this. And what we can do is we can set up animations with lots of sprites moving around the screen or doing lots of different stuff. And we can even check when that animation finishes. So stuff like cutscenes is really, really good. Again, I've been using Construct for about two, three years now. It's like I've never really touched or thought about too much. So unless you are doing stuff around cutscenes or these really, really clever moving platforms, then most people I don't think will see use out of this. Then the mesh editor deforms the appearance of objects in the editor for advanced level design and effect. I have no idea what this is. I have never used this. I have never seen this whatsoever. What I'll do is I'll put a video in the background explaining a bit more what this is. But this is something that I've never had to use or know what it is. So the chances are it's not important enough to pay for premium. But I could be wrong. So this is something that I'm very curious on what it is. You do get one as the free version. Um, but again, I have no idea what it is. So I'll put a video on the back explaining that in a bit more detail. Web fonts, you can download your own custom fonts and put them into your game. Now, for this, you do get one. And with typography, the rule we normally use is a maximum of two different fonts inside any published media. Problem for this, if we use too many different fonts, then we lose that identity. So to have one font to be your main decorative font that you're going to download and then just get another font from the big list inside of Construct is actually enough um, unless you've got lots of custom fonts you want for lots of different stuff you're doing an rpg and you want different tribes to have different fonts and stuff like that i think one is plenty um two would be better but i think one is enough so um i think most people will find one just perfect for them remote preview this allows you to preview your game on a different device so this is something that you can just quickly click on and you can get a link that you send to your mobile phone and you can play it on your mobile phone without having to download an APK or anything like that. And you can send a preview to your friends really quickly and you can go test out my game without having to publish a full HTML5 file or upload itch.io. Performance profile will improve the user experience of your games by optimizing resource heavy parts of your games. 
I've never seen this before. Um, I think it's just something that will run in the background. There's a lot of the form enhancing for you. I know there's a lot of settings you can see under the bug side, and this would link to the advanced debugging um, section as well. So I imagine that these two link together, and it's just about seeing which parts of your game is causing the biggest bit of lag, or which part is um, causing issues that need to be fixed, and maybe it'll fix some of them for you. But the advanced debug features are really, really nice. They do help, um, but I do think you get a fair amount of debug features anyway. Um, so it's just if you want that little bit of extra sort of testing, which is good if you are producing a big um, app, you've got lots of issues with it, then this is really, really nice. Now we move to the features that are not on the website, but are really, really useful still. So let's start with the first one, and this is one that I use a lot, and this is being able to preview sign behavior and do previews for other stuff as well, such as rotating platforms. This just gives you a much better idea where the platform's starting, where the platform's ending, and I, I'm shocked that this is actually a paid for feature because without it, the sign behavior becomes a guessing game. It's not nice to use it all, and to lock that behind a premium feature just seems a bit petty. So I agree the other features being locked away, I think exporting monetization, fair enough, but this one would be really, really nice that everybody could have that one because it is really, really useful. Additionally, what we've got is we've got the option to open the Z order bar. This just means that you can quickly see how each object is layered. So if you've ever used stuff like Photoshop, think of it as Photoshop's layer bar. So this is that particular layer's layers. And you can quickly go through and you can move objects around really, really quickly. Now, for my Pokemon story that I put out, setting up the initial frames, this was something that I had out all the time and it made that process really, really easy. Another feature that we've got is families. Now, families allow you to put loads and loads of objects together and they're grouped as what we call a family. Now, the way families work is that let's say you're doing a collision check or seeing if a player hits a certain object and we say that there's 10 objects the player can get killed by. Normally, we need 10 events to check for every single object. Now, what we can do is we can add all those objects to a family and we can go, if the player touches anything that's in this family, kill the player. And this just massively reduces code down. Now, one of the drawbacks of families is you do need to think very, very differently to the way that you've programmed before inside of Construct. It does take a little bit of extra thinking about, but it does save a lot of time. And we can apply behaviors to families, instance variables that everybody in the family shares. And it just means that you can quickly do a lot of the stuff in a much more reduced event sheet. Another feature we got is the find all references. This allows you to click on an object and it tells you whereabouts you've used that object throughout your project, whether it be on different layouts, whether it's different parts of your event sheet, it allows you to quickly go through. This is really handy if you've got a bug and you need to work out, well, when do I affect this object? When do I change it? And you can quickly just look through and find any time that you've used it in your code really, really quickly and then check those. So really, really nice for debugging and testing. Another feature that we've got is bundle add-ons. If you've added add-ons to the game before, they're just essentially extra behaviors, events, objects that we can get and put into our construct project. And I'll put a video in the card right now on five that I really recommend and really, really like. Normally with these is you need to install them each time or make sure that your browser saves them inside cache. Um, and this is really, really annoying. One thing that you can do inside the editor on the advanced settings is actually bundle them together. So it actually attaches them to the construct file. Um, this is something I didn't know before this video and something I mentioned in that video that it would be a really nice feature. It is a feature, it is behind a paywall, however. There are also four objects that you cannot use, mobile adverts and mobile APIs we've talked about already because that's to do with monetization. Facebook instant games, and this is settings to do with that particular platform which again, you need to pay for a premium one to export anyway. So it makes sense the object is not allowed. And then the multiplayer socket that allows you to create any multiplayer games is also something that you cannot do. All of the objects inside the object menu can be used on a free version. One thing I'm shocked to see that is not behind the paywall is this include event sheet. There's something that I didn't actually realize was a thing, but if you right click and do include event sheet, 
you can click an event sheet to add and it means that event sheet 2 has all the rules of event sheet 1 plus any other events you add. Now, it doesn't matter which event sheets you use, they all follow the same set of rules, so you will eventually run out of events. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you do open a project that does have stuff in that is not part of the free version, you can still edit it and you can edit it quite a lot. So you won't be able to add extra events if it's over the 50 event cap, but you can still edit objects, you can still change code that already exists. If you do delete any code by mistake, it will be gone unless you do control Z because you're not able to add extra code, but you can still tamper and change other people's projects. So they're not completely locking you out of other people's projects just because you're on a free version. So to round off this video today, I think the main reasons that I would be looking at a paid version of Construct, if you've not got one already, is either looking at export options, if you want to export to a different platform, or you want to make money off a game. Those are two big, big reasons that straight away you should go, yes, that is why I need the Construct free version. But for the smaller features, being able to bundle add-ons, if you use a lot of add-ons, if you want to experiment with families or timelines, that would be a reason to maybe look at paying for the free version or just having more events. But again, hopefully this has given you a little bit of an insight to give you an idea of why you would want to pay for Construct. And let me know in the comments, do you think Construct is worth the £110 price tag that it has at the moment? If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.